Mel would like. Hmm. Teacher Mel would like um, to give thanks to each and every one of you for your great support of the new novel, uh, Sunflower, Joy Comes in the Morning. The time has come to start our Q&A session. And during this time, we ask that you please stay on mute. We're not speaking. Um, thank you. And if you can't, if you're having problems with audio or whatever, um, and you have questions, just type it in the chat. We'll, we'll look in the chat. At this time, please let's give a warm and heartfelt welcome to Mrs. Trina Tremell, author of Sunflower, Joy Comes in the Morning. <laughs> Hey everyone. Um, <laughs> uh, first of all, I am so happy to see every last one of you um, on this Zoom. I um, my heart is fluttering right now. I I, I got to get this out the way, Shawana. I am so so happy to see you right now. Um, this is our first time connecting. My first time seeing you uh, outside of social media. And we will get to how I know her um, in, in a bit. But um, for all of you, you guys know me. Um, but just a brief, I'm Teacher Mel, Trina. You, most of you know me as Trina. Um, from Trent, New Jersey. And I'm now in North Carolina, as you all have read. Uh, for everyone that has read the novel. Um, I'm a mother. I'm a wife. <laughs> I work full time. Um, you know, all of what we all normally do. And then I decided to um, further my passions in writing as well as building a, a, a business with my daughters and um, a whole slew of other things that's to come. And, um, but what brought us here today is my, my novel, Sunflower, um, Joy Comes in the Morning. And, um, it's something that's very, very dear to me, as you all know. It is very um, intimate, very personal, and um, very necessary, I feel. Um, and I'm excited to get into these questions and answers or uh, comments, open discussion about the novel. So I will open up the floor um, for anyone that has anything that they would like to say at this time, um, questions. If you want to either raise your hand with the, um, with the little reaction down there or post it inside of the chat. And then that way I'll be able to speak to you one-on-one -on -one and everyone's not over talking each other, okay? So while you are all getting it together, um, I do have some questions that came by way of email for those that were not able to join the um, Zoom meeting. So as you are all figuring it out, I will go ahead on with these questions here, or I'll start with one. And then um, if anyone wanna piggyback off of it or chime in, um, this is from Amanda C. from Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, she says, thank you for sharing your story slash journey. Your story has inspired me for sure. Question, were you apprehensive about putting your novel out? Absolutely. Um, I wrote the entire novel three years prior, I talked about this, um, well, a little over three years now, I talked about this um, before, and I started it 717 of 2017. And when I first wrote the novel, I was angry. I was still going through the process of um, being upset. I was angry. Um, and so I had to put it down because when I went back to read it, I scared myself. 
Um, I said, I can't put something like this out for, you know, my audience because they're going to think I'm crazy, number one. And instead of me inspiring, it would have been more so she still needs help. So um, I put it down for three years and then I picked it back up once we moved here to North Carolina and I um, got the whole thing in order, got my beautiful editor here. You know, we chopped it down and I read this this novel so much that I started to dislike it because it was repetitive over and over and over again. And then when we got down to the tail end and it was time for me to release this, I started backing out. Fear kicked in and I don't know what happened. And I was like, I can't do this. And she would tell you, I started nitpicking at everything from the cover that I have selected and you know uh went into detail with my graphic designer and down to my name how my name should appear and all the things that i was i knew i was sure of but i started backing out and i think that the fear was um and i began to get apprehensive about it was am i able to do this are people going to receive me the way i will want them to is my message going to come across you know the way I would want it to. So I kind of back out of the situation and, you know, but here we are <laughs> because uh, Marcella told me, she said, listen, you, you're trying to wiggle your way out of this and we're not, we're not doing that. You got this far for a reason. So let's, let's get this done. And so I had to go ahead and um, do what I had to do. <laughs> I see a question here in the chat, Marcella. You want to read that off? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Um, hey, Trina, it's Chell. You already know how I feel. My question is, where do you and Mark Keith stand with his family today? Or more so your relationship with his family? Good question. And that is a duplicate. So I will cross this off. <laughs> um wow that's a loaded question so i would say um where we are today my, i want to be careful with how i answer this my relationship with my mother-in-law i feel like we um we respect each other's uh place i am marquise's wife and she is his mother. And so we respect each other's uh, space and, and each other's place as to who we are. Um, I have forgiven some of the things that, well, I'll say I've, I've forgiven um, things that have taken place, things that I feel like it could have gone differently. Um, and I've, I've accepted the fact that everybody's not meant to get along everybody's not meant to like each other um but i will come with respect and you come with respect so um i say that we are in a um peaceful place because i'm not having it any other way okay I have a question. Yes. But, I, you know, I always have questions because <laughs> um, when I started this uh, with uh, Trina, I was just so in awe because I wasn't expecting what I was about to receive. Um, when did you actually start your journaling? Was it during? Uh, when, when you, was it after the passing or during the, the process of being a caregiver, mama, uh, that type of thing? Um, I have always journaled, so it never stopped. So regarding all of this, it was before, you know, uh, the, his passing. Um, so you started actually journaling about this yes before his passing okay. and that came by way of that was actually public to everyone um 
Tyreek.org, the website, I had a journaling blog where I would just pour out. And um, it was there where I began to get most intimate. Um, I shared and bared a lot. And I don't know if people were ready for that because I shared so much from pictures to what I was going through to um, some dark things that, you know, but at the same time, I was kind of shielding certain things too. So I, I also painted the picture that I was okay because I had to keep working and getting through it. But I did start the journaling process before he passed away, Tariq passed away. Okay, part, uh, uh, part B of that question is, so when did you actually decide it? I'm going to go ahead and put this together as a novel. Okay, so um, after he passed away, I, I want to say maybe about a month after he passed away, I sat down on my couch one day and I opened up my laptop and went into my mommy emails. Um, that's what we called it, my mommy account. And I saw that it was literally, it was over a hundred emails that I hadn't gotten to yet with people asking me questions on top of questions as to how am I doing? Um, it was questions even asked before he passed away that I just haven't gotten to yet. And um, they wanted to know where am I? What am I doing? How am I holding up? Um, how did I go about X, Y, and Z with his treatment? Um, a few moms, you know, ended up going through similar, you know, with their children being diagnosed with cancer. And it was so many questions. And I'm like, there's no way I can get to everybody. I mean, I'm looking at over a hundred some of my emails and I'm like, I can't get to this all at one time, but I felt like I owed it to them because they followed my journey the entire time. So it was at that moment that I um, decided, I said, you know what? I'm going to tell my story once. And I posted that on Facebook before I made my departure and I had to come off of um, social media for a while. And I said it, I said, I'm going to tell my story once. And that was back in 2013. Mm. One more question. I don't want to hog it from everybody else, but <laughs> this just is so amazing for me. Um, so yes, you were, um, as I worked with you um, and we were reaching that end and y yeah, you were very <laughs> <laughs> apprehensive Mm. Uh, this is mine. So I, I'm gonna keep it close. Um, I can't share it with, with the world. Um, and and I did. I told you you got to let it go. Uh, so, how are you now, mindset wise, with it now out there, cyberspace for the world to see, read, and know Trina's story. Wow. Um. Ooh. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just really emotional right now. <laughs> and you should be. You should. Yeah, be. it is. Um, I feel like, um, as I hold my story in my hand, um, it became real. I went through this entire process feeling and seeing everything, everything happened right there before my eyes. And, um, but I wasn't, I didn't register it just yet. Um, I think I still was kind of in denial, numb. You know, I celebrate him. I uh, go through the motions, you know, birthdays come up, you know, holidays, things like that. But it's when I wrote this and I released it, it became real to me and it's allowing me to feel doing what I'm doing right now because anybody that knows me knows that I have stayed so bottled up and just so strong and so what I thought was strong anyway. And so um, just closed off like I, I, I don't, I, I can't cry because I have to be so together. And when I released this and I gave this to the world to be able to read and to connect and to understand my place and where, where I've been and where I'm going, it, it's like it, it really became my reality. And so for that, I feel 
I feel whole. I feel human. I feel, um, and, and I know, I, I hope I'm coming across to where you guys can understand me, but I feel complete. Um, because I'm sharing, I'm able to share this with you all um, and to give this to somebody else to read. Because like I said, for those that have seen me and have watched me, um, Shell, I have talked to you briefly about some things and you know, you told me like, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. I thought that things were okay because that's how it seemed. That's what it looked like. But now that I'm able to release it all and give it to somebody else to read, I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulder and I'm allowed to feel. So. That's good. With that said, we have a question over here with uh, Joanna. Have you gone to counseling for your healing in between the time you began writing mm -hmm. until the time you released the novel? Oh, that's a great question. So I um, went through counseling after Tariq passed away, um, which was during some of my writing process. Um, and that was rough because it, for me, it felt like I was being pulled. Um, counselors and therapists, they don't tell you anything that you want to hear. They're going to make you pull out your own emotions and make you face your reality for what it is. And when I started the writing process, like I said, I was still angry. So I was writing in a different headspace than what the therapist was trying to get me to. So I had to pull away from one or the other. So I sat there writing down for a while. And that's when I took the three year uh, hiatus and I had to, you know, get myself together. And so I went through counseling privately. My mom didn't even know. Um, for a while, my husband and kids didn't even know, but I was going through private counseling myself to get me to the place to where is once I moved and I felt strong enough to get back in tune with what I started. Um, because I was mentally uh, better, I was well, I, you know, I was doing a whole lot better mentally, I was able to go back into um, my writing. So it, it came off way better than what it started. And um, where actually my husband, he's um, still in counseling. And I just told him, I said, you know, I said, now that everything is out and um, it pulled so much out of me, him, the, the kids, I said, it's time for me to go back because there's some things that now I, I can properly address because now I laid it out there on the table and I have come to the realization of what it is that my, you know, what my process is, not what somebody told me it's going to be, but what I, what worked for me. And so now I am going back into uh, counseling for my sake of getting through now unraveling all this because I'm still it within that process of my healing. So. Okay. I don't see any more um, questions here, so we can go on with your list. All right. Um, okay. So from Wendy M from here in North Carolina, uh, how did you go about ending relationships or friendships that no longer serve your purpose? Um, that's a good question. Um, as I went through weight loss, I went through my counseling, I went through um, spirituality, my spiritual journey, uh, connecting with God on, on um, different uh, planes, should I say. Um, I noticed that some people just started dropping off like flies. Um, no arguments took place in any way, shape, or form. No uh, disagreements. But I just noticed that I changed. And everyone wasn't ready for the healed Trina. Um, some people like to see you at your lowest because it makes them feel up here. And... The way I went about things to free myself from trying to fit into circles that I just did not fit into, I just let it go. I prayed and I let it go because 
it no longer served me. These people no longer served me. And, and it was God's way of saying, they can't go with you on this journey, just like you can't go with them on theirs. It just wasn't in alignment. And so what I did was just, I prayed on it. And um, I had to understand it's not a loss. I have, I'm moving forward with my life. So if certain people don't fit into that, I have to be okay with it. And I had to choose me over the relationships. So that's, that's how I had to go about that. Anyone else right now before I jump into the next one? All right. Um, from Jazz uh, in Trenton, New Jersey, how are things going now that you have moved to North Carolina? Do you get homesick? Um, well, I go back home so often, uh, <laughs> I can't get homesick. Um, things are great. Um, I spoke about this in the novel. For some, I can't speak for all, but for some, you can't heal in the place in which you became sick. I was so low. I was so beaten down. I was so mentally drained. Um, I thought that I was never, ever going to be able to leave the house in which everything happened. I wouldn't be able to leave my hometown. I wouldn't be able to leave, you know, everything that I knew to be home. And that wasn't the case for me. Um, I needed desperately to get out and I didn't know how to go about it. I needed to choose me, um, even above the people that I love the most in life, um, I just had to, I had to break free from all of that. And I had to start really working on me. Now, my healing and my process started before we left to come um, to North Carolina. But once we got settled here, it's, it's just like, I don't know, my whole entire world changed. Everything changed. I can accept um, life better. Um, I, I'm in a place of peace and I can come and go as I please. When I'm here, no one knows me. No one cares really, you know, they only know what I tell them. So, and so therefore I, I'm able to build on where I'm going in life to whereas when I was back home in Jersey, it's like I became known as Oh, that's the, 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 the lady, you know, her son passed away, you know, from cancer. And it's like, okay, what do I say with that? You know, what do I do with that? Um, my kids, you know, in school, you know, oh, her brother died, you know, of cancer and this, that, and the other. And it was hard for us to, to work through what we had to work through when that's what was going on the whole time. So once I moved and we all kind of like, you know, we had to move forward from that point things just opened up for us. And um, I think it's also too, because we're allowing ourselves to live and to experience life and accept life uh, for what it is now that we are out of the place in which everything was so heavy. But now going back home, as I've been often <laughs> with the book signing and uh, the, the um, launch party and, you know, all that, uh, that that's been taking place, I'm able to go home now and feel like I'm able to face what my reality is when I get there. It, I'm no longer trapped in like this, 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 um, this box and feeling like, oh God, I just, I have to get out of here. No, I feel, I feel at peace now because I've made peace with everything that took place. All right, I see another question in the chat. Got it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yep, I got it. Um, from Kiana, how does Mar feel now that the book is out? Mm -hmm. I know he wasn't ready to relive everything that took place and was in a different place as far as his healing goes. 
Okay. Um, I'm sending for a uh, Kleenex. I'm sorry. <laughs> I told you to be ready. I know. And I have everything else and I forgot. Yeah, that was, should have been number one. Yes. Um, all right. So Marquise is happy for me. Oh God. Um, the level of support is, I can't even explain it. Um, that man will do anything for me and his children. And when I told him back in 2017 that this is what I was going to do, he never rejected the, the process. He never said, no, I don't think this is a good idea. He never said anything um, that would hinder me from doing what he knew that I needed to do. It wasn't about him. It was about me and what I needed because as I learned from my pastor, uh, Pastor Wormley, we will not heal the same way. Thank you so much, sweetie. We will not heal the same way and um, we will go through a different process and a different journey. And the only thing that we are required to do as husband and wife is to support each other through that. Um, the only thing Marquise did ask of me uh, regarding the novel, he said, please don't make me look crazy <laughs> because the highs and lows of what we went through, it was rough. Um, it was rough. But at the same time, he said, but I want you to tell the truth. He said, if you're going to do it, you have to do it. And so now that it's out, he feels... Um, he feels relieved because he no longer has to worry about being so strong for me because he know that I found my place of peace and I'm where I am in my healing. And so he's okay with that. Um, that makes him happy. Um, but at the same token, he's still on page 77 of the novel. I'm shocked that he's gotten that far. Um, it's been, what, since April 26th, and we're now at August 22nd, so a few months in. And I tell him, you take your time, and you do not have to read it if you are not ready, because this is something that I had to do for me, but everybody's not required to read it, you know, um, especially those that had to live through it. And he's in his space of healing um, which is a place that's totally different than where I am. So, um, as he said to me, his job is right now to hold my hand through this and to be there to support me. And he's right there alongside of me, but he has to pace himself towards going through this journey again, as far as reading the novel himself. And so for that, I am extremely patient with him. Like I said, you don't ever have to read it if you don't want to. It's here. This is what, he knows what happened, you know, but um, he's extremely happy for me. Uh, I asked him, I said, you want to do a cameo? You going to stop through? He said, I'm here in the back. <laughs> he said, but you do your thing. He said, but I'm here to support you if you need me, so. Okay. Uh, we have another question, and this is from, is this Shell from Mar Marcellus Galaxy? Yep. Okay, okay. Um, how has your siblings been coping since Tyreek's passing? That's a good question, Shell. Um, so, and you mean my siblings, right? My brothers? Okay. So, you know Tony, look, however which way you know <laughs> That's my twin. I call him my twin. Um, we are the closest in age, and he, he is my children's godfather. I told him, I said, if anything ever happened to me, you and Marquise better get y'all bromance on because y'all better raise my kids. He's been that person since day one. Um, he was Tyreek's second, second dad. He, he was so much more than an uncle. I don't know how he's coping to this day. 
He don't talk much about it. He, um, he had one breakdown in front of me before his wedding. And it was, it was the, and I know he wouldn't mind me sharing this. It was the most, um, ironic thing in how things happen. Um, funny story. They were having the whole, uh, party, you know, uh, before the wedding and the guys doing their thing. It was a snowstorm before his wedding, February 4th. It was the 13th. Um, they did the bachelor and bachelorette party and everything. And it was a snowstorm. It was horrible. So Marquis trying to figure out how he's getting home because the snow piling up to here. I'm freaking out because my dad, you know, he was going through what he was going through. Everybody trying to get home. And so I, I make it there in the snow because I'm trying to be superwoman, trying to save everybody. And somehow they all made it through the snow. And so I got there a little too late. And when I showed up, my brother was sitting in his basement by himself in a chair and he was bawling his eyes out. And I'm like, wait a minute, what's, you know, it looked like it was, you know, y'all was having a party. <laughs> so what happened? What's going on? And so my heart dropped. I'm like, my sister-in-law to beat it and call off the wedding. Did she, what is happening right now? And so I dropped him. I'm like, what's, what's the matter? I'm looking at him in his face. He said, I can't do this. And I'm like, oh, oh, we're not doing this today. And he said, no. He said, Tyreek would have been my best man. And he's not here. And I'm looking at him like, wait, what? I was not expecting that. I, I mean, I'm looking around and I saw that a big bachelor party was going on. Like they were having a great time. And that's where his mind went once everybody left. And so the crazy part about that was, when I left the house, I grabbed the gift that I bought for him that I was going to give him hours before the wedding. And um, what that gift was, I made a pendant for him to wear under his boutonniere. And it was the most beautiful piece that I made myself. And I put Tyreek's picture in there so that he could keep Tyreek close to his heart because I know what Tyreek meant to him. I didn't know that he would have chosen him to be his best man. But so when, and when he said that to me, I'm like, oh my God. And I said, well, I don't know what made me bring this to you tonight. But here I say, he's with you. And so he took it and he opened it. He just fell apart even more, but he was crying like happy tears at that because everything just aligned itself. But that was the only time that I have ever witnessed him, you know, uh, showing any kind of raw emotion or anything like that. Um, my other siblings, um, my two younger brothers, they have expressed their feelings and they have tried to cope by way of music. Um, my oldest brother, he, uh, he talks about Tyreek often. We do the, uh, we do the balloon releases and everything like that. But as far as talking directly to me, or my children about anything, it hasn't happened yet. They're still in their space. Um, we have a question from Shannon. How are the kids with the loss of their siblings? Um, good question. So, Talia, my oldest, which is live with us right now. Talia, actually, would you like to answer for yourself? And if not, it's okay. I, I can do so. All right, if she's going to chime in, I'll, I'll uh, let her as I speak. But um, Talia is, she has gone through um, She has suppressed what has happened since it happened. Um, I think that she was in denial or maybe not so much as connecting with what can actually be uh, from one spectrum to the other. You know, it's a 50-50 chance, it, not even, uh, maybe 80-20, 90-10 as to these children uh, surviving for a few years is what I'll say. 
because to the best of my knowledge, no one has, no child has survived this particular tumor, but even a few years, um, the, the percentage rate is, is, is very low. And so I don't think that she thought that like he can die from this because again, when you're going through something so uh, traumatic, we don't see this every day. It doesn't happen to us every day. So, you know, it's like, well, no, he has to beat it because, you know, stuff like this don't happen to us. And um, so I don't think that in the beginning she really connected with what the odds could be. And then when he passed away, as you all have read, um, she was there. She was present. Um, and... Tyreek's true fashion, he waited for his sister because he gave her always such a hard time. That was his older sister and they fought like cats and dogs, but they loved each other even harder. And um, it was always her that he went to when things were, um, when things were tough, he went to his older sister. So he waited for her uh, to be present before he made his, his exit. And so she experienced losing her brother up close and personal. He was in her arms. And so um, fast forward to eight years later, she is still trying to figure out how to allow herself to connect, to feel, to remember. It's a lot of things that she doesn't suppress so far deep down because she's afraid to feel what it is that she's going to feel. It's a scary process. It's scary because it gets dark. It gets scary. It gets low. Um, and so she's still working that out and um, even working her way up to receiving counseling because again, it's a scary process to get there, um, to allow yourself to feel. So she, uh, her personal life, she's doing great, you know, graduated college and, you know, has so many offers going on. But when it comes to um, celebrating certain things, because she's doing so well, she still battles that, you know, I'm doing well in life and, and uh, I know my brother will be proud of me, but, you know, can I, can I allow myself to enjoy it? Because she's still kind of in that space where she's trying to learn how to deal with everything. Um, Trinity, she broke down for the first time in my arms in 2020. Um, and during the process of me writing this novel, I was actually finalizing a few things and I was getting their own words. Uh, these are their own words in, in, in that section of the book. And um, she had to tap in. And the part that scared me was when she told me, she said, I been holding this in for so long because I couldn't upset you. I, don't, I didn't want you to continue to cry because you already lost a child. And then if I cry to you, how are you going to be strong? Because now we're all falling apart. And that scared me because I, I don't want my children to hold back what it is that they need to feel. You can go crazy behind something like this. And to know that they've been suppressing this for all this time because they're they're trying to protect me. I'm like, no, 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 let me be mama bear. You know, I'm trying to take care of you. And so I saw that that was a pattern that we've all been going through. I'm quiet because I got to take care of my husband. He's quiet because he got to take care of me. And then we're trying to take care of the kids. But then they're worried about, like, it's just this vicious cycle that constantly goes around. And the only way to break that cycle is to open up our mouths and sit down and talk about it. And we haven't really did, done that until I broke out with um, putting this novel out. And so as I went to them one by one, it's almost like I'm interviewing my family in which I should have been able to speak to so freely. It wasn't like that because it's so thick, it's so heavy and we live this. So it's like, okay, I'm trying to talk to you guys, but I don't want you to all fall apart at the same time. Um, and when I mean fall apart, I didn't want them to do that. I didn't want to open up things that they weren't ready for. So, it, you know, I had to be careful with how I opened it up or whatever. But 
Trinity thanked me for doing so because she said now she feels like she's able to express herself to me because she knows I can handle it. And Trent, um, when Trent first uh, experienced losing his brother, he was four and I didn't think that he understood anything that was going on. But I noticed that Trent went from being the most loving child ever I mean, that boy would give me kisses to the, from sun up to the sunset. And he would tell me he loved me all the time. And he was just so loving. And when Tyreek passed away, I would say, Trent, you know, I love you and I'll kiss him. And he'll just hunch his shoulders and just stare at me. And after that went on for a while, I asked my counselor, like, what is this? And she told me, she said, he's, he's trying to understand love now because what he knew love to be took away his brother. And so now he don't know how to connect with that. He's afraid to love because love goes away. And he didn't understand that. And so I had to then start, I had to talk to Trent earlier on, which was good for him. Then I thought I had to, and I, I kind of talked to Trent more so uh, and before I even talked to the girls because Trent was going through different emotions than what my daughters were. Um, so because I had Trent put in counseling early on, they, they would pull him out of class and they would have him in the SMILES program and they would, he was surrounded by other children that have experienced the loss of siblings and things like that. Trent was able to uh, get the therapy that he needed earlier on. So today, he is able to connect and to uh, celebrate and feel his brother on a whole different level to where we are all at. He's more in a um, peaceful place in accepting the fact that he lost his brother because I think he was able to understand what that meant earlier on because I was able to get him into therapy and counseling and things like that at such a young age. So he's coping really well. Um, and he still is in these same programs. I, I, I'm going to leave him there until he tells me he's, he's okay. And so he, he enjoys it, like I said, because he, he sees now that it's not just him. It's other children as well. Anyone else before I answer another question? I do not see any more questions out there. Okay, um, I'm going to save that one. All right, so this is more so a comment from Jessica from Hamilton, New Jersey. Chapter 12, when the chicken stops frying, exclamation point. I love how you are relatable with your words and all throughout your chapters. This chapter was so real and it hit home for me. Um, that was the realest thing that my pastor have ever said. Um... And at first, when he said it at the funeral, you know, we are in the middle of the service. And he said, when a chicken stops frying, it's going to be you. And he pointed to me, Marquise, and our children to be there to um, deal with what you had to go through. And I, I didn't understand what that meant at first. And I'm like, well, what chicken got to do with it? You know, I was looking at it literally. And um, it wasn't until the funeral was over, the repast was over, the house cleared out, and things got quiet. And, you know, you, we had mom and dad and, you know, our siblings was in and out, but people had to go back to their own lives, rightfully so. And um, it was just us. And I didn't know how to handle it because it was hard to deal with just us. And um, I did everything in my power to avoid it just being us. And I moved my cousin, which... Kiki, uh, Kiana McClendon is present. <laughs> um, she was going through something uh, and I was going through something and we, we had always been so close, super close. And um, I moved her in to my home and I don't know what I was thinking because here I am literally going through the worst time in my life, I, going through things that I can't even couldn't even express at the time. And I'm moving in a whole family member with two twin babies that are my God babies. And that was a recipe for disaster. I mean, it was the worst decision that I could have ever made because 
I was going through what I was going through. She was going through what she was going through. And then we started button heads. It just wasn't working out. And I was avoiding what I knew I had to face with just the people that were there. And she was avoiding having to grow up and to stand on her own two feet as a young mom, you know, uh, with about 22, 23, you know, raising her two twin babies and trying to get her life in order. And so once I cleared my home again, you know, and she had to stand on her feet and I had to face what was going on with me, I then it clicked and I said, okay, here's what pastor was saying. And so once everything stopped, all the hype and everything, you know, all the people in and out and things like that or whatever, I had to then face what it was that I was going to face with just my husband and children. And I was mad in the process because I felt like everybody was supposed to be around me at this time and just to love on me and, you know, and just be there for me. But it was certain things that we needed to tackle on our own. So that this, that chapter, chapter 12, um, it really, it was, it, it hit home for me and it was very deep and it was very necessary for me to, sh me to share because I know a lot of people that have been in that same space. Um, and I wanted to give my understanding to it so that it can help somebody else that is going through, you know, that, that funky space or whatever, you know, you, you will have to deal with this on your own. It's not a bad thing. It's a scary thing, but it's not a big thing. And so it, it was necessary for me to uh, write that. Anyone else at this time? Comments, questions? Um, let me no see. comments, no questions out there. Okay. Um, okay. Here's another question, little... Um, not in detail about the book, but what inspired you to become an author? And this is from Lisa from Trenton, New Jersey. Um, I have always, always, always wanted to be a writer. I've always uh, dreamt about becoming an author, um, but not in this light. I said before, I was more on some Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, Twilight, and all that kind of mystical stuff uh, all in one. <laughs> because my imagination, oh my gosh, as a child was just, yeah, like I should have wrote Twilight. Um, and so it's always been there in me. And so um, I never thought in a million years that this will be my breakout to becoming an author. But what I find... Uh, to be most interesting is Tyreek will always tell me that he wanted to take care of me and his dad. And he wanted me to do, you know, all the things that I ever wanted to do and so forth. And um, it took for Tyreek to go through everything that he's going through and then for, you know, him to pass away before I got the courage to be able to do so. And it was almost like he said, you know, mom, now is your time. You have to do this. This has been something that you talked about all of your life. Like for as long as I've known you as my mom, like this, these are things he used to see me writing poetry and, you know, just journaling and things like that. And so it's like he, he spoke and I said, you know what, it, it's time. And, you know, for, for whatever reasons, everything happened the way it did. Um, here I am now as today, teacher, male, the author. So um, I've always been inspired to be a writer and my son made sure that I did so. <laughs> Anyone else at this time? Mm. All right, here is a deeper question. Um, do you wish that you could have done anything differently within your process? Um, this can be such a loaded question. Um, I will say this. I can't take back anything that has already happened. But what I will advise to anyone that is going through anything um, 
remotely close. Pace yourself. Do not rush your process. Um, do not do things to please others and um, do things how you want it done. I was thrown into the fire of sharing my story, which I don't regret, regret because if it wasn't for me sharing, we probably wouldn't have made it. And I'm talking about everything. The community literally stepped in and took care of my family. Um, I, but I don't think that I should have done certain things by way of allowing for so many people um, to just have say so or input. Um, I'll just give a brief example. The way the funeral happened, I was so numb. I was so disconnected. And it was because when I looked around and I appreciated all the love, all the support, but when I looked around and I saw that my mom was like thrown off to the side somewhere, like she was not where the family was seated and I couldn't find certain people that I needed next to me. And I looked, you know, to the right of me and it's all these people that wasn't present. And I wish I would have been able to been in the right mindset to be able to structure even so much as the funeral different. Um, because that's a time where no one wants to sit back and think about a funeral. But when I do sit back and I think about that, I still get kind of uneasy about it because of how it all played out. So I would, I would say to, um, I can't change it. It already happened. But what my suggestion to anybody else that's going through anything, even remotely close, is to pace yourself even when those around you are trying to rush the process, you, you take a seat back and you pace yourself and do it the way you will want it done so that you don't live in regret or feeling like I should have did this differently or I could have did that differently. Um, so I will say that. Okay, we have a question from your mom, Pam. Mm -hmm. She said, do you handle birthdays and holidays any better without Tyree? because myself, I still have a hard time because he would help me make pies and no one has helped me since. Whew. Okay, um, geez, oh man. Strange thing is, um, mm. Take your time. Bye. Take your time. Um, my birthday just passed and, um, I always tell my kids, I tell Marquise, I don't really want to do anything. Um, it's okay. We don't have to do it. I just, I just want to be in the midst of you all. Just, you know, anybody that knows me knows that birthdays were always everything. If you were around me, I'm buying birthday cakes. I am celebrating myself. I am, you know making a whole big deal out of it. But personally, and you may see that on the outside, but within my house, I'm telling, we don't have to do anything. Um, we can just, you know, just nice, quiet, intimate. I just want to sit on the beach and not do nothing. You know, I, I just got like that since Tyreek pa Ty passed away. And that's because, like you said, mom, um, Tyreek was everyone's hype man. That boy loved people. Um, I remember birthdays for all of us where I will come home from work because I always work my birthdays and um, he would come busting through the door. Mom, it's your birthday, mom. Oh my God, we got a cake in there. And he would tell me everything that they bought for me that was supposed to be a surprise because it's wrapped up in bags and boxes. But he couldn't wait to tell me. He would tell me what it was that before I can even open it. And he was like that with everybody. And um. Not to take away from my other children, but we all have our own connection. And that was his thing. He loved holidays and birthdays just like I did. 
everybody's getting a cake. Everybody's getting that big old shout out and all the birthday love. Let's throw, let's throw a party. And it hasn't been the same since for me. Um, and so like you, mom, it just, it has not been the same. And so when this birthday passed for me, I turned the big 40 and Marquise pulled out all the stops and he made sure that he, you know, went above and beyond. And he does that because he knows that I'm, I'm disconnected now. I don't feel the same about celebrating certain things anymore. Um, holidays is getting easier uh, or, or I'm, I'm coping with it better. And what we try to do, which mom, you know, um, we try to, we try to incorporate Tyreek somewhere throughout the holiday. Um, he, his favorite holiday was Thanksgiving. It was not Christmas. It wasn't ha uh, Halloween. He loved Thanksgiving because it brought the family together. And he loved nothing more than to be around all his family. And um, cause you know, he liked the stories that we would tell. He loved everybody being together. It, it was just such a whole big deal for him. So what we try to do to, you know, make things easier to get, get it, you know, get through the holiday is to incorporate him some way, somehow. So if that's making his, one of his favorite dishes, his favorite drink, which was a uh, ginger ale with cranberry juice and a twist of lemon and lime. Um, we try to incorporate that uh, going out to restaurants. We <laughs> hope nobody had owns a restaurant. <laughs> we would steal a fork and we would do that in honor of Tyreek because we took him out to eat to celebrate one day, uh, me and my friend Angela and the kids. And he was just fascinated by certain things. And the silverware on the table just, it, it, it fascinated him. So he asked the word, he said, can I have this fork? And the guy said, you can have whatever you want off this table. He said, I just want the fork. And so he said, oh, okay. He said, I like it. And so he said, mom, put this in your pocketbook. So for now on, like our traditions, when we go out to restaurants, we all just take a fork and we'll put it in our pocketbook. And so that makes things, you know, we try to celebrate the, um, the happy times and, and to remember those fond memories. But um, we do that after, you know, uh, we do that now to try to make, our um, holidays and birthdays a bit easier for us. Okay, so um, yes, I do want to introduce um, Shawana Burns. Um, Shawana, if you could turn on your camera for me, sweetie. Um, there she is. Um, me and Shawana have met each other by way of Facebook eight plus years ago now. And um, we share a common ground. She too lost her son, Devante, from the same exact tumor. Um, to see her post her baby boy, they both play basketball, um, wore the same color jersey, which was the scariest, eeriest thing for me. Um, I was in awe. It felt scary because I'm like, they told me that this tumor was, was rare. And here I am looking at a woman that is going through the same exact thing and she lost her baby as well. And so if you can unmute yourself, are you unmuted? I'm unmuted. Yes. yes. If you could just introduce yourself and tell a little bit about your story as well. All I can say is, uh, yes, we, we met online and I too was like, you guys said this tumor was rare. So when I saw like another black boy, especially, I'm looking like, okay, now, like, this isn't as rare as they said it was, but social media wasn't really as popular back then. So I only mm -hmm. could go off of what the doctors told me, but I just felt like connected to you, you know, just kind of from seeing your story and seeing the similarities that we have with both of our children and, you know, the things that they like, like they were, my son, when I say he was just so perfect, so I cried reading the book. I read your book in about two days. I, I cried like, I, like not sad tears, but sad, happy. I was just, I felt all of that, all of everything you felt, I felt it because I was just like, my son was so perfect. And I'm just like, God, I'm like this boy, just from the moment I was pregnant with him, it, I just had everything was just so perfect about him. He loved everybody. Everybody loved him. Everybody wanted to be his best friend. So when I, you know, saw Tyreek and I saw like a lot of the similarities, I'm just like, oh my God, like, 
I just couldn't believe it. Like, you know, this is some, you were on a trip when yours happened, my son. I don't know. I think he was playing football at the time. So they thought he had maybe had a concussion because they said he wasn't acting normal. And he was like staring off in space. And I'm a, I was a nurse at the time. And I'm like, no, I'm like, you know, I didn't notice anything different with them. So I started watching them for like a week and I did see some differences. So, you know, took them to the doctor. They're like, oh yeah, it's just a concussion. So I'm, I begged them to do a scan of his head. I said, no, I said, it just seemed like something more is wrong. And they're, you know, trying to blow me off. And I insisted. So long story short, they wind up, they sent them for the scan. And we went for the scan. On a, it was a Friday. I remember it was a Friday in October and got a call back a couple hours later from his pediatrician had called. And she didn't, you know, when the doctor called you eight o'clock at night at home, I know it's not good. So being a nurse was kind of hard because I kind of knew, you know, a little something about, but I didn't know anything about brain tumors, of course, especially with no kids. I, with my knowledge, I didn't, I only, on the commercials, I only saw like white kids with stuff like that at St. Jude's commercial. I'm like, this don't happen to black people. So that was, that was me back then. So, you know, long story short, uh, tried treatments, tried everything we could, you know. I was also pregnant at the time too, which really added to my sufferance. I'm pregnant with this baby that doctors told me that I couldn't have got pregnant with a miracle baby and there was just like nine years difference with my kids when being pregnant and I too Devontae had an older sister a uh, Tony uh they're four years apart so I'm like going through all of this pregnant so my son you know he was very selfless he told me don't worry about me mom he said worry about that baby inside of your stomach mm. so when he told me that I was just like oh okay like so I had to stop all my crying and toughen up a little bit and he went through everything with pride and you know, I, I, I beat myself up because I wasn't there the day he passed. Uh, my husband and I would never leave his side. It was always one of us with them. But the day both of us decided to leave because we were just like, okay, we both need a break. We got to get out this house is the day he decided to transition. So when you said that Tyreek waited for his sister, I truly believe that people wait for the right person because it was my mom was there and my sister-in-law was the last person he saw. She came in and that was the last person he saw before he closed his eyes and you know, pretty much went to sleep. I'm glad he didn't have to suffer, but I just beat myself up for so many years. Like I should have been there with him. You know, why did I leave? I was also in grad school to become a nurse practitioner and I wanted to stop going to school, but he made me promise that I would finish school. So as a promise to him, I finished grad school and Lord knows, I don't, I don't even know how I did it sometimes. I just say just the, the grace of God and my son will always be my angel, but I have, I too have, started my story several times and stopped it but you have given me the motivation and courage to go ahead and wrap it on up and put everything into thoughts because I feel like you like people still like ask me stuff and I just I get tired of answering questions and now that my son Justin is that he's in fourth grade so he's at the school that Devante was at in the fourth grade so the school systems they were my, my community was very they did a whole they did so much for us so they wanted to put a plaque in the fourth grade of uh, I guess like the playground with Devante's name, like in his honor. So my goal was to move before Justin went to that school because I didn't want him to have to go to the school and be the, you know, oh, the person whose brother died to have to go through that. But since I guess he was six months when his brother passed away, so he speaks so highly of him. So he he's proud that his brother's mm -hmm. plaque is in there. Like, you know, and then I had another son two years after that, another little bonus surprise baby. And they speak of their brother, like in a present tense, like they know him, like we celebrate birthdays, Christmases, like everything we, we celebrate. They, you know, I personally mourn the day of his death by myself. I don't like to celebrate per se, but I, I you know, we all do our own things, kind of yeah. sort of get together, eat his favorite food. But Trina, I just really just say, I just really commend you for, you know, writing this book and telling your story. And I, I watch you too. Like, I, I guess we just watch each other and it's nice to finally like physically see you. And one day we're going to meet in person. I'm going to come yes. see you or you can come to Cleveland or something, or we can yes. meet in the middle, but it's just like, I, I don't know. I, I married my high school sweetheart. My husband, Lord knows when all this happened, I had to be the strong one. And it was hard trying to be strong. Like, you know, I'm trying to keep my family together. <laughs> just like, I promised Devontae, I said, I'm going to keep us together no matter what. And that was a hard promise to keep, but by God, we are still standing here. All these, it'll be nine years in September since he left. And I'm um, so we're still here. And, you know, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about my son, but I, I, I feel him all around me. And I just, you know, I just want to honor his legacy because I feel like, you know, God gave him 10 years and he's, he's still using us to keep things going. So that, that number, that 10, like 
it's just like so many <laughs> significance of that number to me. So I, I don't know. That was just long story short. And like I say, my daughter is 23 now and, and you know, she, she too is kind of still like, I couldn't force her to do the therapy thing, but she still has like, you know, I think she has a lot bottled up because she didn't want to upset us. And I told her, you know, it's okay to talk. And I personally never went through grief counseling. I, I wound up joining a support group with other mothers whose sons and daughters had the same tumor and they were kind of like my support and kind of got through a lot of things with that. And, and, and we just, as moms, like, you know, once everything's said and done, nobody wants to, nobody, I mean, it's not like they don't care, but nobody understands unless you've been through it. Like you can't compare losing your son or daughter to like losing your grandmother or somebody that, you know, lived out their years the way it was supposed to. Like when a child goes before a parent, that's not normal. Mm -hmm. So it breaks the whole cycle. So it just makes everything just goes like completely different. So you just have to, you know, try to figure out like how to cope and, you know, people mean well, but time does not heal all wounds because my wound will never heal until I meet my baby again. And I said, hopefully I'll be an old lady one day when, when it happens, but it, it just doesn't, it doesn't heal it. I mean, I've learned to live through it. I have my good days and my bad days, but you know, reading your story, like I say, I just, I really commend your courage. Your book, it was excellent. And I'm, I'm glad you did it. And thank you. I thank you for, um, I know I'm, I applaud you. Um, the similarities. I was telling my family about you, and my mom have heard about you for years. And mm -hmm. I was telling my uh, aunt Marcella about you, and the similarities that we share. It was eerie. We mm -hmm. both have twenty-three year old daughters. Our babies passed away at ten. Uh, married our high school sweethearts. <laughs> I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. So I can imagine you reading my story, and you're looking like, "Wait a minute, this is too close to me." Yes. Um, but I'm, I'm so, it, it's, it's crazy how we connected and then we stay connected. I've connected with many people, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a few that, you know, still hung around. And even when I came off of Facebook for six years and then I came onto Instagram and then I found you there and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> here she is. And then we connected like nothing ever happened. And mm -hmm. um, you're so right. When we speak to other people, they can sympathize with this. Some even have empathy, but they, if you, unless you went through it, you don't understand. And sometimes I feel like a nuisance or I feel um, like I don't even know what to say to a person that don't know what to say back to me. Like it's right. just like this awkwardness. And it's like, where, where am I supposed to go with this? Because right. I need to talk it out, but I have nobody to talk to. And it's like, um, when I went on ahead on with the, novel it felt like I was able to then just tell it to everybody right but I'm I'm finding that I'm connecting with so many moms like us it's unbelievable and it's like oh my gosh so here I am and I'm building a platform like you said these support groups they're necessary they're needed mm -hmm. and um I feel like I've opened up the door to to a safe space where it's like come on in like we, we welcome you we want this absolutely um, because even, even within uh, therapy and counseling, which I still highly recommend to anyone, I went back to school uh, for, uh, for counseling <laughs> and um, got my papers in the mail. I guess we're going to walk. I'm not sure with everything with COVID, but I went back to school for counseling because I feel like um, we as uh, Black people, African-American, however you want to identify yourself, we kind of shun ourselves away from it because we mm -hmm. don't really understand it. Um, but I want to open up the doors to let, you know, our people know, like, it's, it's a safe place for this. However, even with counseling and therapy, though, they can only get you to a certain point unless you right. have gone through this. You, you right. really can't help me in certain ways. And so that's why I felt it was very important to connect with you as well as others to... Um, you know, let us know, like, we're here for each other. We're right. here. And um, I'm just, I, I, I am so happy. I'm so grateful to have you in my life. And um, we chit chat here and there, you know, we root each other on from afar. We celebrate our baby's birthdays. I see you post uh, Devante and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is his birthday today. And, you know, we do the uh, brain tumor awareness month and stuff like that. Yes. Like all that stuff gets us through. And it's the little things 
And um, I'm just so grateful to have you uh, in my life and to be able to, and it's bittersweet because I hate that we have to share this common ground, but it's sweet because we have each other. And um, yes, we do. And I just, I just say our boys are playing in heaven together. And I just, like, just, you just have to think like, okay, they're, they're not, they're just them again. And they'll always be right here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank Um, you. And with that being said, uh, as I spoke with you before, and so I'm going to uh, say it to you all, I will be having um, candid conversations. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, inviting a guest or two um, to these conversations in which we will uh, do on my um, like vlog on uh, the T-Square on my website. And I'm going to um, open it up with the five steps that I have used. It's right here on the back of my novel here. Um, The five steps to my healing process. And we'll talk about the acknowledgement, ownership, accepting the process, growth, and the ability to move forward in which, uh, Shawana, I have talked with you before. I said, I have something cooking up and, you know, I want you to be a part of it. So, Um, We will be further discussing uh, more in detail of my process um, along with the novel. Um, So I want you guys to look forward to that. Uh, Before we close and I ask this last question, uh, I'm going to make sure nobody else asks it (laughs) before I read it off. Does anyone have any closing thoughts or anything um, that they would like to say? Any questions, uh, comments? Okay, so I'm not a a talker. <laughs> Neither am I. That's why you're my niece. <laughs> I'm gonna cry, but I just oh wanted to say I'm thank sorry. you. <laughs> because even when I was there through the process and even through everything that you went through, you accepted me and my children into your house. <laughs> even though it was a recipe for disaster. <laughs> I feel like it made me who I am because here I sit in my own house and I I don't feel like I would have been able to accomplish the things that I've accomplished in the last seven years without you and Marquise allowing me and my kids to come and stay with you because like you said, I was scared. I was 22 with two kids a baby dad from hell and nowhere to go. I had $400 in food stamps and $200 in cash and two kids. Like I didn't know what I was going to do. And y'all let me come to your house and figure it out. I had to figure it out quick. (laughs) I had to figure it out quick because I'm afraid of failure. And I'm like, I'm here now. So I don't know what to do because I can't fail because I have these two people that are counting on me, but I'm afraid to step out there because I know that I don't want to fail. And you pushed me and I I just want to say thank you and I appreciate you and I love you and you are truly not only my cousin, but my best friend. And watching you grow from where you were to who you are now is amazing to me and if I could be half the mother and the woman that you are I that that I can only dream of being the type of person that you are at 40 I'm I'm not nowhere close to there yet (laughs) however it's coming but I I just pray that the morals and the values that you possess that I could that you just, you know, float them in the air and I could just catch them and be half of the person that you are. And I just want you to know that I adore you. I adore your kids. My kids adore you and your kids. And no matter where life takes you, I'm, I'll be there. And I, I just want you to know that I love you. Oh my goodness. Um, I love you. I love you just the same. Um, And when I say it was a recipe for disasters, because we had no clue as to what we were doing, but I thank God it happened because 
as you stated, you may have not been able to stand on your own two feet had you not had the right person to push you. Sometimes it takes somebody else. You know, so many people can say, you need to do this, you need to do that, blah, 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 and it doesn't register, but sometimes it takes for the right person. And um, I, I prayed about it and I'm like, God, what am I supposed to do? Like, help me to help her. And, you know, it, it, it worked the way it was supposed to. Everything fell into place the way it was supposed to. But I thank you as well because, Within that process, I found out a little bit more about me. Um, I'm a selfless person. I will help anybody um, that I love. And like I said, me and you have connected since day one, since we have connected, <laughs> what, 2006, seven, something like that on Facebook. And I'm like, oh my God, there's my cousin. And we went joint at the hip ever since. And likewise, you're you're my best friend. And um it was necessary for what happened for whatever reason god aligned it to happen the way it, it it did because it was something that we both needed to get out of that it was something that we needed and um i had to come to some realizations and it wasn't until you came to get me to where you know all of what i was avoiding and things like that and then you know here you are like you said and you hosted my second book signing in your house <laughs> and so you you know, I was very proud standing there, you know, in your home and here you are hosting this whole big old event and people in and out of your house and everything and you had it all together. And I'm like, look at where she is now. And so um, I adore you and you you are an exceptional mother. I just told you that today <laughs> as you are in school clothes for the week and getting your whole situation together. You know, my, my God baby's hair is all nice and done up and everybody's ready for the week. And I'm like, look at you, like you're, you're, you're everywhere where you thought that you couldn't be because you set fear to the side and you said, I'm going to do this. And so be proud of yourself as well, because you did this. I was there to push you along, but you did this. So, um, and yes, you will be with me along the ride. So get ready. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. Can I say, first of all, that recipe was not a recipe for disaster because as you see, God uses people and situations, you know, for the good. So that recipe was definitely a recipe for success for both of you guys. Um, secondly, I, I, I like to say, um, Shawanda and Trina, that, that 10 is a powerful number. Mm. Powerful number symbolizing completion. Um, it, it blew me away when um, we was talking about birthdays and I'm going through this process with uh, Trina and I was born on a 10. So here's that number 10 again. Um, and we just recently put that together. Um, Trina, I have the last question before you close out and you know where this question is coming from, who is asking this question. When or if the book will be audible? <laughs> I was happy I know. <laughs> he told I'm me to actually, make sure yes. I ask that question. <laughs> I am actually uh, getting with my brother Tyrese. He is uh, the one responsible for that lovely trailer that uh, he put together uh, introducing the book. Um, we just actually uh, talked not too long ago and he said, I have to get you in this studio and I'm not going to tell any stories. That is a scary process. I thought writing this was scary. I have to read word for word, play by play this entire novel. And that's going to take me through a whole nother range of emotions. And so, but I told him, I said, I don't want anybody else to touch this though, because as she said, this is my baby. This, this is, this is mine. And so I look into having someone else read it, you know, they let you listen to their audio. And I'm like, no, nope, she don't sound right. Mm, no, no, her emotions ain't coming across right. No, and then I came to the realization, I have to be the one to do this. It has to come from me. And so we are actually gearing up for this. I told Marquise, I said, um, either he's bringing the studio here or I'm gonna have to leave for about a week and go there mm -hmm. because it's gonna take just every, and I'm praying that I can get it done within a week. And so the mister said, well, when he flying in, because I'm, uh, you've been on the road too much. <laughs> so
so we are definitely getting this in order. We just talked about this not too long ago, and um, the audio is coming. It is coming. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Anyone else? I'm Gina, Talia, anybody? I see you, Auntie. Thank you. Um, so the last question uh, before I officially close out, um, and thank you all, um, is uh, from Antoinette from Hamilton, New Jersey. I felt a spiritual connection while reading your novel. I am on a journey of my own, and you've helped me in so many ways. Question, what is uh, next for you? So, um, so many things is happening for me. Um, we're going to keep our fingers crossed and uh, God's will. I'll be attending the Louisville, Kentucky Book Festival in October. My book has been selected. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, for the festival. And when I tell you that was a process, uh, my cousin sent me the information and I'm like, all right, well, I'll fill it out. But I'm here. I am this new author, not even knowing what my book is doing for anybody. But okay, I'll fill it out. And um, it was so many steps to the process, but when they emailed me back and they said, you know, we got your uh, entry and, you know, the next step is to do this. And then they got to check everything and make sure you done crossed all your T's, dotted your I's. And the last step was for me to submit my novel so that they can, uh, you know, view it. They have to read it and then they have to figure out, do she fit a place in here? And when I got the email back, uh, what, two weeks ago, I was blown away. And I'm like, what? So um, I will continue to promote and to share uh, Sunflower, Dewey Comes in the Morning. Um, I am working on my next, uh, I think this one will be a book and not a novel, but we'll see by the time I'm done. Just like I thought this was a book and it's a novel. <laughs> but I have started my writing process uh, for the next book to come. Um, and not to give anything away, but um, I, am, I am going to finish the volumes to Sunflower. But what I realized was um, it's a heavy process. And so I needed kind of like a break in between something to pick us back up before we go back down like a, a, a journey um, of ups and downs. So what I've been receiving from so many people is the marriage. How did you guys do this? You know, you and Marquise is here, but how did you get there? And, you know, well, I'm married now too, and I want to get to this point and so forth and so forth. So this um, book will gear more towards uh, the relationship of things. Um, it's so many people that just have so many questions regarding that aspect of it. You will hear from uh, myself as well as Marquise in this book. Um, and it's something to uh, inspire and to uplift our couples, um, whether you are married or not. Um, but what you will also find in this book is that you don't even necessarily have to be in a relationship with the significant other because we're going to take you there to uh, first and foremost having that relationship with yourself before you can share that with somebody else. So this one is going to run just as deep because everybody know how I am, but it will have a lot of ups and inspiration to uh, get people to the place of where they, they want to be. Um, within themselves or their relationships, finding that right one, marriage and, and, and uh, maintaining a successful marriage as well. So um, along with that, everyone knows that, or a lot of people knows that I also have my business, True Majestic, with my two daughters, Talia's present um, here on the Zoom. Um, we have made it to our one-year anniversary. I thank everybody that has uh, donated uh entered the raffle the winner of the raffle like that was amazing um it was such a high point for us because we didn't know what any of this was gonna you know entail for us and people believe in our products and 
they're happy about what they see and what they feel and what they're getting out of our whole entire journey. So um, what's to come for True Majestic is a facelift, is what I'm calling it. Um, we started here and now we're going to go up a notch. And um, we have some things to shake up and new, uh, new packaging and just, you know, new products, just all kinds of things that's, that's going to happen uh, in the very near future. Um, so we're working on that and we are also looking into a location because True Majestic has uh, outgrown my home and it's time to expand because what T. Tramel is going to do is stand on T. Tramel, the brand and umbrella with everything else that's to come. So I'm, I'm just really relying on God and, um, and, and I trust my process. I know what's, what's going to happen and I'm going to follow my process throughout without fear. So it's so much more to come. Um, there is an event that will be taking place um, spring of 2022. Um, stay tuned for that. We are doing some fine tweaking, but T. Tremel, the innovator, will be present. And um, yeah. It's just, it's a whole lot more to come. Um, but yes, Teacher Mel, the author, is definitely working on the next project. So I can't wait to get it out there and to uh, do this again with you all. So um, with that being said, I want to thank each and every one of you that have tuned in. Um, we will be doing more Q&As regarding the novel, regarding um, the T-square. Um, if there's any questions, concerns that you all may have throughout, because I know how it is. Uh, Shell, I heard from you a couple times throughout, you know, you'll ping me a message and then two days later come and you coming right back and you saying all this, that, the other, whatever, continue on, keep it going because that's what makes, um, that's what make all this great. That I, I'm connecting and I'm doing what, what was intended to do. So, um, continue to do so. Uh, I will be emailing if you are subscribed to my website. If not, subscribe, um, pass the subscription along to the next person. But you'll receive the majority of what's to come through your subscri uh, subscription through my website. And I'll keep you informed as to what's to come, um, what to look forward to. I give dates in a whole nine yards so that it's not last minute. But um, you will definitely be able to connect with me by way of my website and do know that when you're on my website there is a small little link you could send me an email right from there just ping in your uh your uh comment and it's going to go directly to my uh email address so we could connect by way of email as well um i'm always available that way so i love you all and i will see you soon <laughs> <laughs>